You're watching Element Hobbies, and these are 10 commanders who are better than their EDH rec ranking. Tavash Gloom Summoner comes in at 1,256th, with only 498 decks as of this video. It's a 5 mana value mono black commander that's 4 4 with lifelink, and at the beginning of your end step, if you gained life this turn, you may pay X life, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. If you do, create an XX black demon creature token with flying. Tavash has a lot going for it, including being mono black, which means you can run a lot of utility lands that mono black gets to enjoy, and they're all really good. It does cost 5 mana, but again you're in black and you have access to good burst mana, in addition to the standard artifact ramp, so Tavash will generally come out pretty quick. But the real strength of Tavesh is all the table wide drain effects that mono black has, which will essentially become a siphon to make giant black flyers. For example, the classic Siphon Soul translates into a 6-6 flyer just by itself, and that's assuming you don't attack with Tavash or have some other table-wide drains running, like Creeping Bloodsucker. When you start pumping some heavier drain, you're looking at free double-digit XXs each turn. There's some issues with Tavash, and that may be the reason it's ranked so low. Being able to trigger just once and only on your turn makes us a bit fragile as far as engines go. And since it is in mono black, it has to compete with all the other mono black commanders, and there are a lot of good ones. I'm also guilty of this, considering I have most of my good mono black cards safely inside my Gix Yogmoth Praetor deck, which I've made a video for before, and we'll have a link for in the description below. Enricure the Traveler ranks at 920th, with 956 decks. It's another mono black commander, and it's also mana value of 5. It's a 4-4, and whatever Anrakir attacks, you may cast an artifact spell from your hand or graveyard by paying life equal to its mana value, rather than paying its mana cost. This is the second mono black commander on the list, and it also can do mono black things, which makes this 5 mana value commander not that hard to get out. It's just weird to me that in the colors of burst mana, tutors, and even graveyard tutors, Anrakir isn't played more. Big mana artifacts are really broken, and Anrakir lets you play multiple a turn, and if the artifact gets destroyed, you can just cast it again. However, Anrakir similarly suffers from being a mono black commander in a world of terrific mono black commanders, some of which are in the same Warhammer pre-constructed deck as itself. Additionally, big artifacts are a pretty overserved archetype, so maybe Anrakir is just a victim of too many people already having their pet artifact commander of choice. But still, free artifacts from your hand or graveyard is really, really good. You know what else is really, really good? This video. And if you're enjoying it as much as I am, feel free to hit the like button so that my content will spread across the internet like the Necron Robot Grim Reapers spread across the multiverse. Lavinia Foil to Conspiracy ranks at 1,932nd, with a staggeringly low 134 decks. One of the factors in how a commander ranks on EDH rec is recency and obscurity. Lavinia came out fairly recently, so it hasn't had a lot of time to stack up decks. But also she's in that clue set box thingy, which was terrible. Not necessarily the cards in it, a bunch of those are actually pretty good. I'm talking about the overarching clue game variant that the package presents. Not only that, but Lavinia wasn't even guaranteed to be in the box, so you may have bought the clue product and not even known that you didn't get a specific card. Ugh, that goddamn product. Anyways, Lavinia Foil to Conspiracy is a 3 mana value Azorius Commander. That's 2-3 and has Vigilance. Whenever you cast your second spell, investigate. Additionally, you can tap it to add 2 generic mana to your mana pool, but only on your opponent's turn. Right off the bat, I'm just gonna say it. Having a soul ring in your command zone for 3 mana is wild. And while it's not exactly a soul ring, it doesn't take that much work to make it about just as good. Blue and white have a lot of flash cards that are usually not quite good enough, uh, that's mostly because the extra mana cost associated with Flash is enough to make things borderline playable. Well, Lavinia takes care of that for you. But I think the best use for Lavinia is to spam the Flash giving spells, then just use that 2 mana to cast blue and white's normal powerhouses at Flash speed. Lavinia does have a few things going against it. While powerful, a Soul Ring in the command zone is pretty boring. Doesn't really get the creative juices flowing, am I right? And if you've been paying attention, you've noticed that I've only referred to her as a Soul Ring which ignores her other ability, which is pretty ignorable. Two spells for an investigate is fine if you just happen to do it, but it isn't something I would consider building around. Kutzel Melamed Exemplar ranks at 814th, with 1,199 decks. It's a 3 mana value Selesnia Commander that's 3-3. Whenever one or more creatures you control, each with a power greater than its base power deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. 
Oh, it also has your opponents can't cast spells during your turn. I made a video previously that is a guide for a deck that could use either Kutzel or Sovereign Okanika Howe as the commander. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to that in the description below, but you know what to use with Kutzel. Plus one, plus one counters, anthems, and ores or equipment that buff your creatures. Sovereign Okanik has much more snowball potential, so I could see why it would be a more popular commander, but don't sleep on the protection that Cutsill provides. It's like a mini grand abolisher right in the command zone. Plus Cutsill can generate card advantage on its own. Sure, one card a turn isn't crazy, but it's built into what you're already doing. Nadar Selfless Paladin ranks in at 1,271st, with a paltry 489 decks. It's a 3 mana value mono white commander that's 3 3 and has vigilance. Whenever Nadar's selfless paladin enters the battlefield or attacks, venture into the dungeon. It gives your other creatures plus 1 plus 1 as long as you've completed a dungeon. Nadar is really, really good with blink effects, and white has a lot of those. Dungeons themselves are pretty good, especially if stacking blink effects means you can finish one every other turn. That's not too hard to pull off in mono white. Now, there's also a slight caveat with Nadar. It's a new dungeon called Baldur's Gate Wilderness, which is supposed to be only used as part of a commander event for local game stores, but if you can get your playgroup to allow it, Nadar becomes even better as Baldur's Gate Wilderness has many more worthwhile encounters before the end of the dungeon than the regular ones do. It's also way bigger and provides more of a challenge to complete. I'd also like to point out how cool it is to be tracking up to five different dungeons, each having a potential different effect triggering each time Nadar is blinked. That gives you a lot of options in your play, and that's something that I love. One reason I can see Nadar not being super popular is that dungeons weren't really supported as well as I think they could have been, which is why I think Baldur's Gate Wilderness should be allowed in Commander. I think a lot of players see the dungeon mechanic in only a few dungeons, and that just makes them kind of lose interest. I mean, even attractions are flashier and more varied, and those aren't even in a real set. There's also a tarnish on Mono White and Commander, mostly from the first 15 years or so of Commander. Mono White was by far the worst color identity in Commander. That's going to take a long time to wash that stink off. Mono White has really good cards now, and Dendara works really well with all of them. Cecily Haunted Mage comes in at rank 1246 with just 507 decks. It's a 4 mana value Grixis Commander that's 3 5 and makes your maximum hand size 11. Whenever you attack with it, draw a card and lose a life. Then, if you have 11 or more cards in your hand, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand without paying its mana cost. Now I realize there's a lot of 11s on this card, that's because the Universes Beyond version of this card is 11, from the popular internet show Stranger Things. Get it? The character's name is 11, and 11 is a number that's on magic cards. It's all very clever. Cecily happens to be in a terrific color identity to get cards into your hand and fast. While slow and steady draw is fine, you can do some bursty card draw to get 10 cards in hand quickly, then attack, get the extra draw, and unload a giant spell onto the table. Since you can ignore any mana requirements, you can go all the way big with spells that will let you cast either more spells or get you more turns, and since you're already drawing a bunch of cards, you'll end up with hands that have cheaper free counter spells to protect your Cecily. Cecily is actually just a good commander, not the best in Grixis, sure, but a 4 mana attacking Phyrexian Arena that gives you a hand size of 11 isn't the worst by itself. I'm sure she has lower deck counts considering she can friends forever, so those other partner builds are kind of diluting the pool. Oh, and another negative is that if you play the Stranger Things version of this card, everyone starts targeting you with Drake cards. Wonder why that is. Commander Liara Porter ranks in at 883rd, with 1037 decks. It's a 5 mana value 5-3, and whenever you attack, spells you cast from exile this turn cost X less to cast, where X is the number of players being attacked. Then exile the top X cards of your library. Until the end of your turn, you may cast spells from among those exiled cards. I guess people look at this and see 5 mana value and think this isn't a good Boros commander, and boy are they wrong. Let me paint a picture for you. You have 3 toughish to kill weenies and your commander in play. You send your weenies at different players. Liara triggers, and here it's important to know that she does not need to go in the red zone herself for her ability to trigger. It's just whenever you attack. Now you reveal three cards from the top of your deck. Now I want you to think about all the cards in Boros that become really, really good if they have three generic mana removed from their casting cost. I can think of a few. Not to mention that artifacts casting three or under just become free, and I can think of a few artifacts that cost three or under that become insane when they cost nothing. There really isn't anything that would make this so bad that it's ranked so low. I guess a 5 mana value Boros Commander isn't instantly considered a good Boros Commander, 
and I guess the cards you exile need to be cast that turn, whereas there is a more modern version of this effect where the exiled cards can be cast on this turn or the next. But that's not that big of a deal when you're reducing the cost of these exiled cards by 3. Kaima the Fractured Calm comes in at rank 830, with 1167 decks. It's a 4 mana value Gruul Commander that's 3-3. Three, three. At the beginning of your end step, go to each creature your opponent's control that's enchanted by an aura you control. Put a plus one plus one counter on Kaima for each creature goaded this way. Kaima seems like a little bit less salty of an Iriet the Beguiler, who I may or may not be making a video about soon. Instead of controlling those creatures, you goad them, which actually might be better. I, I happen to think that goad is severely underrated as an ability in Commander, and being able to goad a bunch of creatures from different players relatively cheaply is really strong. Not to mention that Kaima is getting bigger and bigger while your opponent's creatures are killing everyone but you. Slap down some Rancor type auras. They'll give a combat boost, but also return to your hand when the creature they enchant dies. Your goad will cease its effectiveness once it's down to 1v1, which is why you use those offensive auras on Kaima itself. Give it double strike or trample and then fling it or berserk it. There's actually a lot of ways you can win a 1v1 situation with Kaima. Not only that, but you still get a lot of the great green enchantment strategies, meaning you will always have a supply of auras to incite your opponent's creatures. Aisha Tanaka Armor ranks at 1077th, with 709 decks. Aisha's a 5 mana value Azorius Commander that's 2-4 and can't be blocked as long as defending player controls 3 or more artifacts. More importantly, when it attacks, look at the top 4 cards of your library. You may put any number of artifact cards with mana value less than or equal to Aisha's power from among them onto the battlefield tapped. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I'm a self-admitted Azorius stan, so maybe I'm more excited about this than I should be, but is anyone else seeing what I'm seeing? A tag with Asian, you just put 4 artifacts into play. In all honesty, I think this is an incredible value commander. Right off the bat, she gets all your mana rocks, gets all your artifact lands, and more importantly, gets you a ton of really good artifacts for free. And that's before you even begin working on increasing her power. Just a bit of power here and there, and you start getting into some wild shenanigans where you can start generating free powerhouse artifacts. One thing I am noticing about Aisha and other commanders on this list is that a lot of them cost 5 mana, and that's certainly a hindrance to some degree. Aisha would be better if you could use a mana rock to get it out on turn 3. However, I don't think using that turn 3 instead to cast an equipment is bad, as it sets you up for casting a turn 4 Aisha and turn 5 attacking with a pumped Aisha. I have just one question for you. Would you run Craterhoof Behemoth as your commander? Alistair the Brigadier is the number one on this list, ranking at 1,172 with only 583 decks. It's a 4 mana value Bant Commander that's 3-3, and whenever you cast a Historic Spell, create a 1-1 White Soldier creature token. Whenever Alistair attacks, you can pay 8 generic mana. If you do, creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of Historic Permanents you control. Now I want to start with why Alistair might be ranked so low, and I actually don't have a good answer for you. It makes tokens passively and you have plenty of options for triggering his ability. I particularly will probably focus mostly on artifacts and legends. And being a 3-3 for 4 mana is fine. I think maybe this got lost in the shuffle since it was in the Doctor Who pre-constructed decks and that pre-con set had like 4,000 potential commander combinations with all the doctors and companions being able to partner with each other. The mana to activate is a bit steep, but it is also the amount that you would have to pay for a Crater Hoof Behemoth. So it is a reachable and realistic amount of mana to get, especially in Bant. But know that the buff counts all your historic cards, not just attacking or creatures. For example, it counts legendary lands and artifact lands, or even legendary enchantments. Mamma mia, that's a lot of history. So you could end up attacking and actually getting a bigger buff than a crater hoof might give, except this is repeatable and on your commander. No, it doesn't give trample, but luckily you are in a color identity that does have a few ways to give all your creatures trample and protect them all. That's like one of Bant's specialties. These commanders are definitely better than their ranking would suggest, and I would say some of them are actively great commanders. I'm personally going to be building an Alistair and an Aisha deck soon, and maybe doing a video for them. I'm uh, currently working on that area at the Beguiler video, so I don't know if I'll have the time to make one of those. Would you watch an Aisha or Alistair video even though they're old commanders? Uh, let me know in the comments, and if I get enough comments asking for it, then maybe I'll do it. If you're looking for more popular commanders in general, I have an entire playlist filled with detailed EDH deck guides. Or take a look at this video YouTube will recommend. I bet it's another commander video or maybe a deck box review. Thank you for watching Element Hobbies. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you around.